Hi guys, hope you're all well. I just wanted to give you a quick update on the brass components situation. So I made a video uh, a week or so ago just talking about the new proposals from the latest Firearms Act amendment, which is due to sort of come in. It's the 2023 uh, Firearms Bill, which has received you know all the consents it needs to become law. And one of the concerning points about that was from Brass Components, and it sparked a lot of controversial comments and uh, people arguing and stuff. And like I said in the video, guys, this was just uh, a heads up to keep an eye on this situation. I wasn't telling people that it's definitely going to happen. I was warning about worst case scenarios, and I want everyone to be able to keep an eye on this stuff so that if the worst comes to the worst and it is the worst case scenario that goes forward people aren't going to fall foul of that because i'm sure as we're all well aware if you're shooters that you know any slight infractions even if it's kind of by mistake or you've had the the best of intentions those slight infractions can lead to your license being revoked and that will be up to you then to challenge that in a crown court and it will take months and months and many thousands of pounds unless you've got shooting insurance hopefully you have but i really don't want to see people fall foul of that kind of thing so this is why i put this stuff out there just as a a kind of helpful hint for people to keep an eye on it to go and talk to their solicitors to talk to their legal representatives to get more information you know, I'm not suggesting uh, for a minute that this this was the sort of end of the story. In fact, I spoke about it there and said, you know, I was awaiting more information myself. And I've had a little bit of information. Now, it's not um, a sort of official source that I can post up and quote. It was simply uh, my solicitor friend uh, reached out and said he and his other solicitor buddies had had some communications and in those communications with the powers that be it was promised that there would be caveats in the legislation that's due to come out that would basically protect people that collect brass that are you know responsible normal collectors of that for military or whatever reason you know that they've got some or they've made key rings out of it or they're using components for some sort of art and craft hobby and they also suggested there would be things in in to protect shooters that are reloading their own ammunition and for example have a bunch of brass that isn't currently on their ticket and that was kind of the biggest concern because sure enough in the wording that we looked at it was fairly obvious that they would be looking to tie in with that you know that you would have to show intent to actually manufacture that brass into a, a full built item the problem of course for reloaders is that intent is probably in existence with the fact that they've got all the tools necessary to reload they've probably got powders sat around that could be used for that i mean you know for making that type of ammunition so if you wanted to be really awkward and you found someone with that caliber uh, that they didn't have on their ticket but all the other accoutrements to put that together that could have been a big problem. Now, as I say, there is a sort of unofficial discussion that's occurred that suggests that won't happen. Uh, so that's all I can report. But this is still something to keep an eye on because that doesn't necessarily mean it definitely won't happen. It doesn't mean it will happen. It just means that as responsible shooters or people that are you know, concerned about staying on the right side of the law, we should all keep a very close eye on these things and take a good look at the legislation when it finally arrives. And if you're unsure about what you're looking at, then go and seek legal advice and, you know, at least let your solicitor know what your concerns are so he can record your concerns. And you may well be able to utilize that as evidence later on that you were being a responsible member of society. You were trying to stay on the right side of the law and you did everything within your power to ascertain if what you were doing was legal or illegal and that's not to say by the way that you know the police will always have a, a thorough and good understanding of some of these quite complex situations so it may well be even after things have you know been written in the correct manner and we've seen similar things with the uh, counter-terror laws that were bought out that they were bought out with the best of intention they seemed quite well written 
but actually they were applied in order to move people on that were taking pictures that were irritating to someone or you know uh, in quite unusual circumstances and that wasn't what the law's intention was to begin with but that ended up how it was used in the end so you know that's worth noting that uh, you might still end up with some explaining to do even if you're on the right side of the law um, you know we do a lot of nice stuff on this channel as well we'll see review a lot of those and the same thing goes for people that are carrying an EDC blade I've heard lots of stories about people being stopped by police in busy places and searched and what have you and then they've got a perfectly legal you know uh, sort of pen knife that's non-locking that's sub three inches and they're still getting into trouble for it and being taken down the station and yes in the end you know nothing happens bad to them but uh that's still going to ruin your day so just beware of all these things you know that it's, it's not uh sometimes as simple as it, it first seems you know just simply saying hey that's the the law and i'm correct uh it doesn't always wash and, and you might have some work to do to kind of prove that so seems like good news it's nice to report back on on something that seems to be going in the right direction I hope it continues to do so and if i hear any more on the subject i'll let you guys know um one thing to be aware of uh which i still would have concerns about is there's no doubt this is going to become a controlled component so there will be issues with maybe how you're disposing of it because let's say you have a range which normally had big buckets of brass sat around and the range is also accessible by the public and they would walk across it and find brass littered everywhere uh, there may be a concern that you are giving someone access to a controlled component, i.e. criminal gangs who might start going to these ranges and sort of picking through uh, what's left out there. And that could be a concern. So it's certainly something to bear in mind, you know, that you may want to be a little more careful about how you store this stuff. Hopefully there will be some sort of... Uh, um, guidelines that are coming out you know from the home office that sort of stipulate the care that you might take with stuff like that and not just leave it up to people's imagination because i'm sure people will think all kinds of things from it should be locked in a safety deposit box to it should be ground to pieces through to oh never mind just leave it outside there's nothing wrong with that anyway so you know somewhere in the middle of all that there, there must be an answer but just something to bear in mind guys Thank you very much. Have a great evening and I'll chat to you all later.